My name is Duante Hines. Usually I make music as Blood Orange and I produce and write songs for other artists. Initially came from more of a classical background, playing cello in orchestra than piano. And then, you know, you somewhat rebel from that world. Played in a lot of metal bands and punk bands. And, <laughs> and then, you know, the cycle comes back around. Julius Eastman was a black gay composer from New York State. But even calling him a composer is almost a disservice to the multi-dimension of, of his artistry. He was a phenomenal singer who had uh, sung on recordings by Pierre Boulez, incredible dancer. He had worked with Arthur Russell, but he was also this really phenomenal and interesting composer. You know, growing up, you're not really taught about many black composers, let alone black composers who are really pushing boundaries. So it was so exciting for me to, to discover his work. And from then it was kind of just, you know, all in. It took me a while to understand it. I mean, obviously there's incredible melodies and rhythm within it, but I remember desperately searching for the scores online because I just needed to know what was happening here. <laughs> you know, I had no idea. And I was attracted to it, and I, something was really pulling me towards it. But it took time to understand it. And honestly, I think I'm still understanding it. Even in working on music with Adam Tendler for, for this concert, I suddenly had a new way of understanding some of these pieces. A lot of these pieces, you know, they almost weren't necessarily meant to keep existing. The reason why it was hard to find a lot of the sheet music is because they would just be thrown away. You know, be written for a performance and then kind of like dashed away. And so all of these things make it slightly more difficult. And also the idea of something that exists solely in a live setting, which is how he wrote this music for you to like be there and listen and see it being performed. There's still only like a few recordings of Gay Gorilla that exist. I mean, you know, like three. <laughs> so when you compare that to like any other composer that has attention. So I think, yeah, you, you do, you feel that, you feel this sense of trying to break through. Wow, that is good. It's funny, I think before this concert, my answer would have been very different. I might have said Joan of Arc, but since working on the pieces, I think I'll say Gay Gorilla. Because kind of like I said before, I have such a new understanding of it. It's like if you had seen this like beautiful house that you walk by all the time and, and it's so nice, and then you're like let inside. And I have a whole different view of that house, and that's how that piece feels now. <laughs> 